And how's it going then? Ladies and gentlemen, came out. And guys, today is the day where I finally do my drifting. So, if you guys have been a part of the channel since under a thousand subs, I said, I'm going to be doing drifting for my birthday. That's my thousand sub video. And if I actually did it around my birthday, it would be really, really well timed to hit a thousand just in February. And my birthday was early March. So I was like, yeah, perfect. It, yeah, um, it, it's taken a while. It is currently the 26th of the 5th. Um... And I'm finally going drifting, so I'm all suited up, I've got long jeans on, I've got a long sleeve shirt on, and uh, I'm all ready to go. So we'll be leaving my place in about 20 minutes to get there, and I've got my whole family basically with their iPhone saying, record everything. Anyway, should be a good time. I hope you guys enjoy the video to follow. All right, what you guys are watching right now is basically me just walking around all the cars. So there were five cars there in total on that day. Uh, there were two Skylines, two Sylvias, and a 180SX that had an LS1 in it, apparently, according to the owner of the business. So I very briefly was holding my phone kind of at my side, just walking around all the cars. I ended up driving uh, three of the uh, five cars, and... Uh, yeah, so this is me now walking up to the L. This is the first time me getting any of the cars, and the 180SX was the first one up. <laughs> so because it was my first time getting in the car, I had to Have jump fun. in the passenger side. <laughs> See, he's killing. He's like, <laughs> he's gonna die. <laughs> Dude, by the way, I wanna block your ears. Yeah, the LS1 was the loudest car there, bar none. It was super loud. You'll hear the LS1 over all, all the skylines. Alright, so that was a pro driver, kind of demonstrating a little bit for me. Um, now, you won't see many clips of me in this car because I just drive it the one time. I actually asked him to do another lap just to try explain it to me. Anyway, so I do get the basic idea of what he's doing and how to do it, but the thing is with this 180 is that the handbrake is the stiffest, most hard thing to pull <coughs> ever. Um, it, it, it literally took me all my body weight and just me wrenching it like a madman to even get the handbrake to, to move. Um, so basically my instruction was first to second, left, right, handbrake, left with the clutch in. And it, the handbrake was so incredibly heavy that I, I literally just could not lift it half the time in this car. I ended up almost doing more of a clutch kick or just smashing the gas and hoping the car would slide more than anything else. But uh, here we go. This is my second time around. As you can hear, I kind of just hit the gas and just eventually it kind of swings a little bit. Alright, so here we go for my third lap. There you go, finally got it going. So this car was told to be the hardest car to drive because of all the power it had. Um, being such a short wheelbase also made it quite difficult to drive apparently. And also the handbrake just made it impossible to get that back end to swing. That was my best slide in that car. Yeah, yeah boy. Alright, so here's the R33. This is the number four car. This is the car that I end up driving the most, and it's why I was actually looking for an R33 in the, in the first place. Or a Skyland as a whole. Which as you guys know if you come to the stream, I'm actually looking at an R32 yeah. right now. <clears throat> He wanted a he wanted a skyline. Well, that's commentary in the background. <laughs> I actually had a lot more success in the skyline than in that 180. The skyline's handbrake was so so easy to pull in comparison to that 180. So easy.
as you guys can see, I'm actually getting the drifting going now because I had the understanding. I just couldn't get the handbrake going in the in the, in the um, 180. By the way, you're probably hearing a lot of race cars in the background. Uh, it was like an open day at the actual racetrack itself, not only drifting. <coughs> so, I actually don't know how fast I'm drifting. It's probably 10, 20k an hour max. Um, None of the car, there you go, <laughs> I overcooked it a little bit there on that one. That was my first spin out of the entire day. Second spin out. Basically at this point, I could do the corner consistently at a slower speed and not get too much angle and not go too deep into the back end of the corner. Um, so being... <coughs> Being more comfortable in the skyline, I was just like, look, I'm going to try to push it, I want to get faster, I want to get better better at it as a whole. So this is where I'd start spinning out a little bit more, and um, a little bit more success as a whole. You can hear the, um, the turbo in the background. He did better in this car than in the other one, that's for sure. Now again, don't be too harsh in the comments, this was my first time ever driving any of these cars, first time driving, even trying to drift, ever. So, don't be too harsh in the comments, I've never done this before. Well, in the dirt a little bit, in a car I was very familiar with. But it was an automatic that I slid about into the dirt, and it was the dirt, which is a bit different. So this is the four-door R33 Skyline that they had there. Or is it an R32? I forget. It's one of the two. But, uh, yeah, this is the four-door one. This is actually the least success I had as a whole. I spun out a lot in this car. Um, this Skyline, compared to the other one, had a very, very heavy clutch. And um, <coughs> the handbrake wasn't as good, nor was the gas. The gas didn't have as good a feel as the number four car. A little bit of success in it, but uh, overall it just wasn't much, much, much different car to the to the, the car I was very I was very familiar with being number number four. So that, that was my first attempt at a donut, and it just didn't go well. I did have another donut at some point, but I actually couldn't find the clip. I guess uh, my family missed it. I had a really, really nice donut in the number four car. As you can see, I did have some success in this car. And here we go, hop back into the number 4 car. <coughs> so this is, a, this is actually with another, uh, another one of the instructors. And uh, I actually had a lot more time on this, car, uh, on this one than I did in any other. And basically I had the, the turn down for the most part. You can do it almost every single time. It's pretty simple, so... I was now telling the guy I want to advance, I want to try getting to donuts, and um, you, you, you guys see what starts happening when I go for donuts. Very basically, the donuts are very difficult to do because my mind was constantly on just doing that one hairpin turn. I was so good at getting the hairpin, hairpin turn that it was kind of hard to retune my head to start doing donuts. Because I was so used to just going round, straight, round, straight. So going round and round really threw me for a loop for a bit. But as you can see, I had the, the hairpin corners easy. I had that down by then by the end of the day. I could do it almost every single time. I couldn't follow the same line, but I had the actual technique and the slide pretty much down. And that was my first real big mistake other than a spin out. Basically, when you're coming off the gas, um, in, in real cars, the car kind of wiggles quite a lot. It's quite hard to control. You have to become very smoothly off the gas. Otherwise, the car jiggles or will transition like it did there. Definitely the hardest thing um, when it comes to drifting. It's coming off the gas, not on. And see, that was when my brain was like, okay, I've done the corner straight enough. And I was like, no, you're doing donuts now. God damn it.
Basically, you couldn't just keep going down, you could do one donut and then it says the instructor would say, please straighten up now. And then I overcooked it that time. Not enough steering input. I try to keep going, but he said, stop, stop, stop. Like, I could initiate the drift, I could get the first part of it almost right every single time. It was the continuation of it that was the hard part. As you can see, I'm getting the idea of it. I can keep the car kind of going, but um, <coughs> it's very, very hard to get the steering input right, the gas input right, and everything. So here I say, look, you need to show me how it's done. I want to try and understand and try and watch you do a donut. So that's me in the white shirt hopping into the passenger side. And uh, this is the pro drive. He's not a pro drive, but he's done competitions before. And here's him hopping in the skyline to show me how it's done. Anyway, so here he goes. So. As you'll see, he's far more aggressive on the gas, so look how much more intense his turn in is. And then he adds quite a lot more gas. And he actually overcooks it because it goes from wet to dry to wet, and then when it hits the wet again, he just had too much input from when it was still dry, so he lost it. So it's like, hang on, hang on, hang on, that's not how you do it. Let me, let me do this again, let me go through it once more. So he does a quick lap, and here he goes. This is how it's properly done. So while he's doing this, he's actually talking to me and telling me how to do it. So he's actually not doing a whole ton of turning. He said that was my biggest problem. I just was trying to turn too much and not turning enough. And I wasn't getting the amount of gas right. I was either too high or too low. So he's like, look, you need to find the midpoint for both. And it's very little input for both when you get to that midpoint to keep it going. <coughs> and I was like, all right, cool. I'll nail it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we swap seats again and <laughs> I give another shot. So yeah, he's just talking to me, just saying, look, you know, this is how you do it. You really just don't exaggerate it. And you see now I'm getting more aggressive with my swings. I noticed how he was doing it, so I copy that. So that was one of my better initiations. And there I overcooked the acceleration, but I had the steering right. So again, see how more aggressive with the swing in? And that time, overcooked on the gas with, um, the steering again was okay, but I overcooked the gas. <coughs> there I had enough gas, just not enough steering, so I went wide. And then I overcooked it with the gas. There I entered too fast and didn't get on the gas quick enough. There, basically, I just hadn't swung it in hard enough and wasn't hard enough on the gas. I needed more gas, otherwise the car just wasn't spinning tires. And that was my final run. What a day. What a day. And there you go guys, that was my drifting day. So there was a good couple of spin outs, um, a lot of points where I could have drifted better, but again, first time ever, I had a lot of fun. As you guys know, I'm looking into getting my own drift car at the moment, uh, it's an R32 Skyline, pre-built, so it's just someone's old drift car, they've obviously upgraded and moved on from it. Uh, I get to look at it on Tuesday this week, so I believe it's the 3rd of June. I'm super excited, there will be a video of me going to check it out for the first time. I, I don't know what to think. I got um, a, a mechanic family friend who I'm actually paying because it's his job. But yeah, he's coming along with me to meet me there. And we're going to have a look at this car. Hopefully it's all together. Hopefully it's, um, you know, well built, looked after, and um, it'll be mine. If not, um, if it's not in the best of shapes, I'll either see how much, like, see if that guy will fix it, and then I'll, you know, still get that one. Or I'll be getting, you know, saving up and getting another car and building it myself. One of the two. Either way, drifting is 100% happening because I am addicted. 110%. I, 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 I am going to be drifting. Anyway, guys, hope you did enjoy it. Thank you again for over 1,000 subs. Over 1,200 subs now. You guys are fucking legends, as always. See you in the streams.